And once again, we are now even Steven. But even the, Steven. But the thing is, I can't really tell where I should put the microphone right at this moment because you've actually changed the setup of your room again. Yes, I have. And, and what does Sophie think about this? It looks like a psychiatrist's office. Yeah, good. So it's like, I suppose it's just subconsciously doing it to actually help support your mental health. Yes. And, and considering that I I did a Northern Hemisphere spring clean, how, how clean do you think this room is? I think it is... Sterile? <laughs> that, that's actually a good word to explain it. Yeah, sterile. So anyway, um, this is the As Yet Undecided birthday podcast featuring a birthday boy, Michael Panara. And Sophie. Uh, um, yeah. uh, it's not my birthday. Yeah, I, I, I know, but we have to talk about you being a host. And yes, as we are filming this on my actual birthday. You mean recording this? We are recording this on my actual birthday. Which means gifts. Oh, okay. Because I remember last year... We talked about the many questions that Sophie wanted to pose towards me. This time, there are, there are actually no questions. There's actually no questions. Nah. And you sell this up pretty well. Oh, it's called Spit. Okay. Split plus adhesive. Well, we, well, Mike, to be fair, we will be talking about a topic that's near and dear to your heart. Yes. Uh, yeah, mental yeah, health. Dear. Mental health and how to help people recover from it. Oh, yes. I mean, do you mind, or...? Would you yeah, like... I don't mind it. I think we had enough time yeah. since the particular incident to um, talk about it. Yes. Alright. So this is a gift from me and Josie, our mutual friend. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of funny that this postcard say is um, an S word. Yeah. And it's... Uh, a Tyrannosaurus ten... Rex trying to do a bench press. No, no. He's trying to do a clean and jerk. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah, and since he has so, so little arms, yes. that he's fallen over. Oh! Yes. Oh! Yes. Which is why I only gave you a card, because the gift itself is electronic. Oh! Yeah. Huh! Yeah. Well, thank you so much. You like it? I do like it. It's not as good as the old Christmas present, but I thought it might be helpful. Should I explain what I got you? Um, do we have a sponsor for this podcast? No, we don't. <laughs> we have a we have a reverse sponsor. Me and Josie paid actual money for this. <laughs> Me and Josie paid actual money for this. And no, we don't have a sponsor. <laughs> and we would love this one, though. Um, if you guys are wondering what I got to Mike, it's a three-month subscription to Audible.com. Yes. By Amazon. But the thing is, Mike, I would recommend that you get the um, you get the one-month free subscription first before you start using that, so you can get four months. Yes. That's a good idea. High five, Sophie. Ooh, that was a bit loud. Yes. Um, but in saying that, thank you so much. You're welcome. Considering that I know that you like. Yay! I'm... Considering I know you like books, but you can't see anything, <laughs> but, you're a, but you've still got your ears, yes. that's a compromise. And you can't read Braille, so. Oh, yeah. You can't read Braille, you're blind, and yet you've still got your ears. Audio books. Yay! Oh, I, yeah, well. There, there, there's probably a lot of recommendations that I could probably use for that. Yes, the thing is, you only get four audiobooks. Yes. One audiobook a month, and I only got you a three month subscription, plus you can get one free subscription from Amazon, yes. which means you can only get four books, Mike. Yes. So pick carefully. Yes, I probably will pick carefully. And I'm sorry we can't get you a longer subscription, but those damn things are expensive. I bet they are. Yeah, I know. I bet they are, and well, I, I will thank Josie as well. Yeah, please do. Yeah. So, I mean, it's. I mean, the two of us, we, individually, we did not spend more than it was socially acceptable. Yeah. But, it was expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's yeah. why we had to do it together. It's, we it, had it, to combine it, our purchasing powers together, so. No, because cause, cause, cause if, we, if we compare this to yeah. a gift that is socially acceptable. Yes. This is a lot more meaningful than something that is socially acceptable. 
what would be a socially acceptable gift? Um, l- 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 like either a food item or a lottery ticket. Yeah. Why would those be socially acceptable? No, because because it's like 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 even though this is technically a gift card. Yeah. You've actually taken thought about the type of gift card that you want to have. Yes, the product. Yeah. That's all redeemed for. Yeah. So, like, you would say, like, give me a $40 warehouse gift card. That's a bit generic. Yeah, exactly. It's generic. Whereas this gift card, it's for specific products that you can redeem for. Yes. Yeah. And I will actively partake in. Yeah. Yeah. And you would actually enjoy using it. Yeah. So. So, yeah, it's it, it's sort of like beyond generic. Yes. Yeah. Because I don't think anyone else would want to have a gift card like this. And who would want to read, I mean, listen to audiobooks? Only you, basically. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But in saying that, yeah. how have you been, Sophie? Tired. Uh, yeah, because um, Sophie can't cope with... Um, university. University. It's intense. No, 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 no. University over a certain limit. Yeah. Yesterday, as of with, as with any Wednesday, I have seven hour days, and I'm like, every what, why, what was I thinking? I mean, I guess I have breaks in between the classes, but I'm in, if I'm at uni from ten to I'm at uni from ten to five for the classes, then I have to wait an extra hour for the um, buses to settle down because um, I don't like traffic. If I catch the bus at five, I have to I won't be home for an hour. For an hour. Yeah, um, I, I think that um, after this podcast, we'll. We'll talk about a, a suitable in between to do help you cope with that second hour old gap. No, I'm like, um, I can't do anything to change it anymore, so don't worry about it. Okay. I'll live. It's only, for, it's only on Wednesdays. Yeah, yeah, but, but I was thinking, yeah, we'll talk about it after the podcast. Um, okay. But other than that. Pretentious food corner. W- what is the pretentious food of, of, of today? Kiesa's Kitchen, made with the love since 1991, food, passion, family. Three Vienna eclairs. They weren't free. They cost of 30, they cost like, what, $20? Did you say free or three? Free. Free. <laughs> with an F. Three Vienna eclairs. But they're not, they weren't free, they were $20. But it, 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 yeah, it's like, what, what, what is the free part of it? Well, it's apparently free of, like, uh, gluten. It's FODMAP friendly. I can't remember what FODMAP is, but apparently it's like a gut condition in which you Oh, have... yes. Yeah, I'll... well, well um... if, you have Fod... if, you have... if you have FODMAP, what can't you eat? Yeah, well, I'm not exactly sure, but yeah. it's something that I have to research up because it's a new diet trend. It's a new diet trend, yeah. So anyway, I have heard of FODMAP before, but I, couldn't... I cannot for the life of me right now remember what it is. So, uh, let's see. Always gluten free, wheat free, GMO free, no artificial colours, but FODMAP friendly and fructose friendly. Fructose friendly? I have no idea what that means. Yeah, nor do I. I'm not sure what fructose friendly actually means. Well, if there's something else that we don't understand, it's pretentious. Yes. Therefore, well, yeah. welcome yeah. to the corner. Yeah. Like, don't that or might. Oh yeah, I was reading, I was listening to a podcast about that. Uh, oh no, sorry, it was a AM show interview about Bob and I'm like, what is this? So I'm like, okay. You were listening to the radio? Oh no, I was listening to the AM show. What's the AM show? It's the um, News Hub morning show. Oh yes. Um, this was at uh, the ophthalmology eye clinic. Wow. Yeah, it's the only time where I where I. Um, watch the AM show. Okay, so how's this? This is super pretentious. It's uh, apparently they're made in 474 Princess Highway, Noble Park, Victoria, in Australia. Princess Highway. Okay. Right, do you want to try some? Okay. What about the Vienna Eclairs, anyway? I think they've got chocolate in the them, so. Oh, they do! They're half chocolate. Oh my goodness! They're three quarters chocolate. Be careful. Be gooey. Oh, okay. I so you have like shortbread with jam in between them, covered in chocolate. Yes. And the reason, yeah, the, the, the reason why the bottom half is not covered in chocolate, 
It's because that's where you hold it. Yes. But there's a quarter of the eclair that's not covered in chocolate because that's where you have to hold it. That's just sticky fingers. Sticky fingers. Sticky fingers, yes. Yeah. Three. Two. One. The chocolate is good. I'm not too sure what's up with the shortbread. It doesn't, it doesn't quite taste right. Hmm. Yeah, this doesn't taste right. Mm. So yeah, exactly. Shortbread, meh. Okay. The jam is, the jam is a bit meh. Not tasteless. The jam is tasteless. And you got three of these for $20. No, there's six of them. Oh, okay. dollars But still, that's pretty expensive. Yeah. Some, but it's not yummy, I have to say that. It tastes like a health food. It, it, it tastes like a traditional afternoon pretentious food. No. Because, because, because... No, it tastes like a health food. The short, yeah. There's something off about the shortbread. Yeah, yeah but, but, it's, but it's a traditional recipe, but made into a health food. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay. I still eat it though, it's actually quite yummy, especially the chocolate. Mm. I know what's like, how to how to display it now. Like a thick shrewsbury covered in chocolate. Yeah, we'll go with that. A thick shrewsbury covered covered with chocolate. Mmm. Griffin, you may have an idea on your hands here. Mm-hmm. Chocolate shrewsburys. Oh yeah. I'll buy that. <laughs> you consider that it was the time of the year where you would get um, chocolates a chocolate bottom and egg biscuit. Mm? Mm-hmm. This is my longer than an Anzac biscuit. Would you like another one? No, no, you can have one. Actually, I, I didn't have lunch yet, but I did have my lunch before I even wore all those. Yeah. Me and it, please, they're not good for me. <laughs> so, anyway, chocolate covered Anzac biscuits. They're not Anzac biscuits, though. You know what are they? They're, they're something else, not Anzac biscuits. But maybe, maybe we can call them. Oat, um, oat. Oat coconut chocolate biscuits. Yeah, oat coconut chocolate biscuits, but they're not Anzac biscuits. According to the trademark, Anzac biscuits have a specific recipe. If you add it, if you alter it in any way, it's no longer an Anzac biscuit. And yes. adding chocolate to it definitely changes that. Okay. And what is the lunch, though, here? Sausages and roasted, roasted potatoes. Okay. Yeah, they're very traditional. To bear with. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, but is there, um, Bob Matt free or Bob Matt Freddy? No. <laughs> I have to ask. What the hell is the Bob Matt anyway? Yeah, but yeah, I'm not sure exactly, but um, we'll, t- we'll talk about it in a uh, later podcast. Oh, yeah. Because we're going to talk about diet treatment at some point or another. We're up to episode 50, 50 whatever now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I believe this must be like 55 or something, but this will change. Yeah. Don't quote us on that. Yeah. Don't say that. You have to admit, you have had a hard 32 years. Um. Yeah. Um, now, now, hmm, that, that, that's a good question. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you consider to be hard? That, that, that's the question. You, you did not have as many advantages as me. I have to say that. Yeah, yeah, we'll be yeah, thinking about that. In fact, you put, Compared to the average person, you have many disadvantages. Yes. Such as um, your, mental, your mental health isn't all that up to scratch. Mm-hmm. You came from kind of um, low socioeconomic. Oh, Sophie's Sophie's got the terminology down there. <laughs> well done, Sophie. A low socioeconomic background. Um, your parents didn't quite understand you. I oh, did well, it, but it didn't help that they did not complete their high school education. No. Yeah. They would give the, but they would like that would be considered to be the norm of um, New Zealand's education standards now, how? but okay. mum wouldn't be. All right. So you, so your dad, how many years of school did he have? Well, he, well, he completed the equivalent of in school with two. Oh. 
argument about it afterwards, but I'm going to say, yeah, yeah, that's the word I wanted to say. So it's a bit like arguing over the pronunciation of a particular word, such as buffet. Yeah. Or buffet. Yeah, yeah, but... Like, it, we, we, when we say buffet, we know you mean buffet, and therefore it doesn't really matter, should it? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's like, um, beer. Yeah. If, if someone says the wrong beer... Yeah. Do you correct them, or do you just carry on understanding what they mean? I'll just carry on. Yeah. And besides, you have to admit, a living language is an evolving, evolving language. What do you think are the rules now with not be the rules in 50 years' time? Correct. For example, selfie. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and honestly, can you guys understand the difference between ye and yeah? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, can't, I don't. Exactly. So, Thanks, though. so yeah, so so those sort of um, because I've noticed uh, nouns um, between the ages between twenty and now, mm-hmm. um, the the grey side of me has been a lot more prevalent. The grey side. Because um, you, you know, because of mathematics. Yeah. Right. Is either either you're right or you're wrong. Black and white. Ah, oh, yes. Right? And the reason why I wasn't very good at subjects like English oh, yes. was because it emphasizes on the grey. The, the 50 shades. Yeah, the 50 shades. Um, and I know that since the evolution of me studying sociology and psychology, that the greyness is becoming more prevalent. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I still have the black and white stuff. Um, deeply rooted in my subconscious. Yeah. Um, the, the, that greyness is a lot more prevalent, and the the, the, evil, the evolution of my um, of, of the self yeah. through self discovery mm-hmm. has been um, one of the biggest parts of me returning to me. Even though with everything else going on. Yeah, I mean, I've always seen a lot of great myself. But, um, yeah, it's quite nice to actually know that, um, there's no such thing as a right answer sometimes. Yeah, cool. And, hey, just is not a cool fact. When people only ever offer you two options, usually there's at least five. Yeah. You have to think outside like the box. So, for example, ask me a question about, um, Dari Da or Dari Da. Okay, am I am I better with glasses or without glasses? So here are your options: glasses, no glasses, contacts, uh, different glasses, monocle, and monocle. Yeah. See five options there. Exactly. Now, and how about this one? Are you either a Democrat or Republican? The answers are Democrat, Republican, uh, what's it? Libertarian. Yeah. Apolitical. Yeah. Why is it both sides? Yeah. So it's either, it's either, or neither, both, and other. Yeah. Well, the, the, yeah. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that Amazon Alexa should have been called Amazon Sophie. Why is that? Sophie. Give me a fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> the spiral of a sunflower follows the Fibonacci. So, um, wouldn't you think that the Fibonacci had a sunny day? I say so, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, back to, back to you. Yes. You had your various health problems, and including mental health problems. <laughs> now, yeah. Now, do you want to talk about the most recent, the earliest, or the middle one? Talk about the earliest. Earliest. Alright, um, being, being a naive teenager, mm-hmm. we call it that, we'll, we'll call it that, and with parental expectations. Yes. Right. Um, first lot of exams. Which, well, how old were you? Year 11. 16, 16, 15? 15. 15. 15. 15. I, 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 was, I was the youngest of my class for a year. Oh, yeah? Um, yeah, a lot of, a lot of expectation. 
people thought I was going to fail mm. at particular subjects. Um, so, and this was this was before uh, this was before the internet was so prevalent mm. and today. Um, like we didn't have dial up back in two thousand nine. Yeah, two thousand nine. Um, in that time between the exams finished and the results, mm-hmm. um, the expectations were still there. They were still very really real. Yes. Um, and then thinking about uh, what would happen if I was going to fail one of those classes. Ah, uh, yeah. And, and, and Sophie knows, and probably the people that listen to the podcast know exactly. Um, what I'm talking about here. Um, in thinking about what, what will happen. Fortunately, I passed every subject. Nice. Um, and that sort of, um, that sort of naive thinking mm-hmm. was blocked away in the proverbial closet. Nice, that the, the thought that you're not good, good enough. Yeah. And, and I'm sorry, so that's, pre- that's pretty much um, that sort of notion of not being good enough is still... Prevalent to this day. Yeah, yeah. Even me, actually. Yeah. I mean, I suppose there's all the stresses and the fact that we all have to have a certain standard, and if we don't have those standards, we're just, we're not, we're dumb, or we're stupid, or we're not, we don't deserve to be here, or blah, 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 blah. Yeah, more, more cannon fodder than anything else. Yeah. That was the start of darkness. Yeah, yeah, that was the start of darkness, um, like, like I will say that I used to hide myself in the closet a lot. Mm. That was my proverbial safe, safe haven. How was that? Oh, because it was the only part of my life that I thought was safe mm. was being locked away in a dark closet. Isn't that a bit difficult? For depression? Yes, it is. Mm. It is. It, it, you know, it, you know, in keeping the door shut. Yeah. Uh, compared to now, where. Even though I'm a lot more expressive about it, yeah. um, I am still constantly afraid that um, the old adage, the boy who cried wolf, yes. is still part of my subconscious. So that's why the filters of, of, of this depression uh, uh, you know, are put up. And it's very few people can open up the closet door. Yes, because yeah. because of, of of that afraidness mm-hmm. of saying like you know you're just being drama for or something along those lines where I'm trying to be as honest and as raw as I can. Be. I am honoured to be one of the few people who can open it. Open yes. The doors. Yes. And you're very, you're very brave to share all this. Yeah. Um. I mean, if anything, if there's some things you want to eat at house, you're more than free to do so, okay? No, 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 because, like, um, one, I do agree that, that, that this should be out mm-hmm. as well. Um, also in saying that, like we were talking about before, the filter is still up. Mm-hmm. So I am still editing my word very carefully. Before you speak it. Yeah. So... I totally understand this, yeah. And remember, you have a secondary problem too. But anyway, what? when did your depression start getting to a head? That was um, problems for you. Now, it's. It, 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 it comes to a point where coping mechanisms don't work. Mm. Uh, when you get a whole bunch of traumatic experiences piling up um, on top of each other and not resolving them. 
and it just um, doesn't matter. When did that happen? That happened three, three days. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, let's we, we, we just say that the pressures of everything and the expectation, um, some, some bad stuff happened, not necessarily out of my control, um, some that I blamed myself for it, some that I didn't, um, and that sort of overwhelming stress got to me to the point that uh, it came to a head. What was the event that made you realise you were breaking down? Um, it was the, the overwhelmness of my work situation. Um, I was technically doing four persons jobs at the same time. Mm. So they'll give they'll make can you do too much? Yes. That's that's and, pretty insane. Yeah, and you, can you can't clone yourself. Yeah, yeah, I, I I know, but it was just that that it was unfortunate the reason why yeah. those people had to go. Yes. Those three people. Yeah. So like like for instance like ACC mm -hmm. and um, drug suspensions, stuff like that, and they didn't hire new people. Not fast enough. Not fast enough, and it just accumulated. And so that made you break down. Yeah. Uh, now about that place, we need we actually do need to talk about that workplace yes. because. For legal reasons, we yes. not want to disclose exactly where it is, okay. but it has been a hot spot for employee suicide. Recently, yes. In the last month. Yes. For suicide. And how many employees? Yeah, I think, I think it was like four since the season started in September from the end Oh, sorry. I thought it was going within the last month, yeah. what, within the last six months, yeah. there's been four suicides out of how many employees? Um, it goes to about 500. It goes yeah. about 500 employees. Yeah. Four suicides and 500 employees, and we actually don't know what the real suicide rate is, because the coroner never really this. Yeah. But, you have to admit that you're, you get a feeling it's higher than average. Yes. Um, the, the, the latest figures um, that, that are released, mm -hmm. it's usually a person every... Yeah, it's, it's three persons a week. Three persons a week in a, in a country of 4.5 million people. Yeah. That's... I mean, that's pretty bad. Yeah. A three... No, no, sorry. Sorry, it's, it's 666 in a year. 666 people. <laughs> oh! Yeah, yeah. So, so, 666 people in a year so it's, in a country of 4.5 million people. So that's 9 10 a week. 9 10. And 9 tenths or 9 to 10? 9 to 10. 9 to 10 people a week in a country of 4.5 million people. And that's one every 450,000, 450, right? Yeah. One, one in every 450,000... No, wait, no, but yeah. No, no, so wait, I'm just trying to quickly do the maths. One in 450,000, one in 450,000 in a week, which means 12 in, no, 6, 12, no? What? Oh my god, I'm so bad. 24 in 450,000, which makes it about one every 2,000, is that right? Yeah. One in every two thousand per month, per every per six months. One in every two thousand every six months. That place had four suicides out of five hundred people in six months. That's like one. That's one in every one hundred twenty-five, which makes that place twenty times more dangerous for your mental health. Is twenty times? Twenty times more dangerous to be mental health than an average society. 
which makes me wonder, can that company then can that company be not be um liable for commercial manslaughter slash corporate manslaughter. Corporate manslaughter. Yes. And there is an actual term for for it because uh you um, over the years, um, there's been se there's been several cases of mines causing huge amounts of death and destruction in a given area because uh, their processes were not up to scratch. So, for example, the Al the Aberfan disaster was caused by the, the mines not disposing of their landfill properly, and that caused a gigantic landslide. Yep, and uh, you know, and this was brought up more prevalent in New Zealand by Pike River. Yes. Um, so, so such um, things are called. Oh my goodness, I'm trying to work out what what they actually. It's not. It's not just called corporate manslaughter. There is actually this term for it, legal term. And um, I mean, I'll just quickly research this. You you talk about Pike River. Yeah, um, Pike River. Um, they decided to do a world first mine where uh, the fans were extracting from inside the mine out, and there was only two possible ways to get in or out physically. Um, what happened is that the fans stopped working. Um, Methane was built up inside the mine and it came to a halt and two explosions happened, killing the 29 people inside the mine. Um, the CEO of Pike River, I'm not sure if he was charged or not with corporate manslaughter, but because of what happened, corporate manslaughter now currently exists in New Zealand war. Um, and I did put this on Facebook in regards to corporate manslaughter uh, for employee salsa. And I was hit with mixed reactions, let's call it that. Uh, because there are so many stresses that happen in regards to ending your life that how can you make sure that it was the employer's fault. Like with Pike River uh, mine, you can make sure because um, it was the inactions that ended their life physically. Yes. Oh my goodness, I am so frustrated right at this moment because there is actually this one thing called like a one-off nuisance that could, that could be caused by a, a gigantic disaster. So it's, it's similar to corporate manslaughter, except it's just called, called corporate disasters in general. Yeah. But, you know, tell you what, I'll, I'll put up notes for that. But So, do you think, considering that um, that place is so dangerous for mental health, it is 20 times more dangerous, they're 20 times more likely to suicide working there than the general population. Do you think that that workplace should be liable for corporate management? Because, well, you actually have two things to think about here. On the one hand, suicide is a self-inflicted act. But on the other hand, if you're, if you're working your employees so badly that their mental health deteriorates up to that point. Surely you should be liable. You should be, you know, liable for causing such harm. Now, the reason. Well, not not necessarily for suicide, but for causing the mental harm. Now, the, the reason why I decided to to um, pose this question was because what businesses are currently doing at the moment seems to be inefficient mm. because we live in a economic society where it is profit over the person where we have to make laws in order to safeguard the people 
Which is unfortunate. Yes, it is unfortunate. I would like for uh, businesses like that to do more. Yes. But it's it, 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 like there is a tipping point. Yes. Where something has to be done mm -hmm. in order for something to happen. Will it happen now? I um, hope mm. so, but it won't. It won't. Will it happen 20, 30 years from now? I hope so. Yes, well, the thing is, that's a, that's a lot of, that is one big reason why a lot of people think rich capitalists are greedy, selfish people. Because of instances like these. Yes. So, I suppose if you're an employer, please look after your employees. Yes. They, they are under your protection.